Welcome to my new series, One Day Builds, or DIY One Day Builds, where I go over simple projects you can do with a little bit of effort and time. On a regular basis, I build a lot of stuff I normally would overlook making videos about. Why, you may ask? Because I never felt like a video on these simple projects would make good long form videos or garner any attention. And that's mostly because I thought so and I wanted to output much higher quality robotics videos too. Don't worry, I'm making a lot of those robot videos and you'll be seeing them real soon. But that's a dilemma because as a 500 subscriber count channel, thank you to all my 554 subscribers as of the recording of this video. All the project costs are fully funded by me, a friendly neighborhood, temporarily broke engineer. All in all, I decided to start this series where I make simple videos on simple projects which can act as a guide for you the viewer to achieve and the most time should be relatively easy projects if they fall under this series. Without further ado, let's get into it. Now this is for my regular viewers. First of all, thank you all for the support. Please drop a comment on the new intro and how much you like it on a scale of 1 to 10. I'm trying to make a lot of improvements. And I also finally got a new microphone, so hopefully that brings improved audio quality to the channel like never before. And to everyone who's watching, more than 90% of you aren't subscribed, so if you like the idea of this series and the new robots which I will be releasing videos on soon, why not subscribe to the channel and leave a like. It helps push the videos on the channel further to others who are like you and might enjoy what we do here. Thank you and let's get back to the video. Alright, so enough of my yapping. This is a simple heart rate watch which, like the name implies, it monitors your heart rate. Yeah, that's all it does. I know you probably expected more but that's it. So how did I get here? First things first, just like any project, I define the objectives. You must be able to do or have the following. Be in a watch form factor, so more like a watch and less like a bulky pile of wires. Two, it's got to be able to monitor heart rates as of course it wouldn't be medical grade data or readings but you know just an actual data set. Three, it must be rechargeable. Four, it needs to have a nice screen. Five, it needs to have Wi-Fi connectivity capabilities. Six, it needs to be able to connect to an IoT app where one can see the heart rate readings and seven, it needs a Type-C charging port. So quite simple. With all of these selected, it was pretty easy to settle on the components I needed, which were an ESP32 C3 Super Mini, which like the name says, it's super compact and useful for projects like this because it has Wi-Fi on board. The Max 30102 heart rate sensor, a small LiPo battery, I would have gotten a smaller one but not locally available, a LiPo battery charge and discharge module which makes it really easy to charge the battery and also have load sharing, so allows you to put on the system and also have the battery being charged at the same time. Also gives 5 volt output so that's pretty pretty good. A small switch and a 1.3 inch OLED display. Oh yeah, before I forget, the breadboard with some jump wires just for running tests. First things first, I set out with the sample code and heart rate sensor to confirm I could get the appropriate data and readings when using the sample code. But let me make this clear, the Max 30102 heart rate sensor needs firm pressure on the skin and usually will be placed on the fingertip for minimal skin depth which allows ease of penetration for good data. But we are going to use it on the wrist and I know that's not where it's supposed to be used but hear me out, you know, simple project, you can ignore the complicated stuff. The code and module work just fine, as you can see on my screen's monitor, where on the Arduino ID I have readings from the serial monitor for the average BPM as it's being printed. But here comes the biggest problem of all, compactability. The build needs to be extremely small, so I make sure to solder these small 22 AWG wires to the screen and run the test connections on the breadboard. I do this instead of using headers that would occupy more space and that's because they will get in the way when I'm trying to squeeze in everything for the final build. I also maintain this method of thinking throughout the project to make sure it was as small as possible. After soldering and snipping off some excess wires, the screen was ready. Now here's the thing. Instead of spending my time trying to perfect the electronics and making all the connections along with programming everything, instead, I decided to take a different approach and make the watch case first. So I set up Fusion 360 and dived into 3D modeling. Now my reason for doing this was so that I could print the body of the watch first. 
The idea is that I measure the parts, estimate how much space they'll occupy based on their positioning and arrangement, and then I optimize said arrangement in the best possible format. After which, I make sure that every component can be contained in the smallest amount of space possible. Now, this was hellish. I made mistake after mistake, iteration after iteration, 3D prints after 3D prints after 3D prints. Now, yes, a bunch of it was human error and bad estimation, but hey, I finally arrived at this design where the heart rate sensor sat at the slots on the bottom of the watch so you could contact the skin with an opening, and then right beside it would lie the slot for the battery charge and discharge module. Then the battery would sit on top of everything while the microcontroller will slide and stay sideways up in a nice slot in the left, to the left of the battery. On the body of the watch, there are two extruded mounts that allow for the spring-loaded metal rods that help mount the watch strap, so it can actually be worn as a watch. And as for the screen, it would obviously be secured from the inside after being aligned, and by secured I mean hot glued. And finally, to the left of the casing is the charging port and switch rounding up everything. With the final iteration of the design and 3D print done, I decided to couple it. Now, I want to apologize that the footage here isn't so great thanks to the fact that I didn't think I'll be posting this video, but nonetheless, here it is. I glued the Max 30102 sensor in, then I soldered the wires for the battery charger controller to the battery output, which is controlled by switch and to the Type-C port for input 2. This was quite difficult as I had little to no room to work with and I didn't want excessively long wires. With the heart rate sensor and charge the charge module set in place, I glued them in and glued the battery on top. Because of the male headers I had soldered earlier on for the ESP32, I had to bend the pins inward so that it would fit into this tiny row available on the left. I forgot to mention it earlier. But in the design, I added M3 screw slots so I could screw everything in and have it as compact as possible. Once I was able to fit everything in and confirm it was working, I proceeded to bury myself in the code. This is how I program the device to function. It boots up and displays the logo, then attempts to connect to Wi-Fi. If it doesn't connect in 60 seconds, it goes to offline mode, where it just measures the heart rate and displays it on the screen. Of course, this is also based on if it's on contact with any skin or not. So no skin, no reading, skin, reading. Heart rates above 100 are signaled as high and heart rates below 50 are signaled as low. It's in bits per minute, that's the reading unit I chose.
but it also has an online mode which it goes into if it connects to Wi-Fi on startup. Then while it measures the heart rate, it sends the data every one second to the app. It's also set up to check for loss of connection and if that happens, it goes into a subroutine to constantly check and try to reconnect, ensuring that data is constantly sent to the mobile app. And as for the mobile app, it's the third party app Blink which allows me to make a very simple user interface for the project. With that, here's the final product. Well, if you've watched this far, thank you. Make sure you're subscribed, leave a like, and you can drop a comment about this project. And if you have any video ideas for one day build videos, I will appreciate all of them. With that, read some circuits, make some robots, and I'll see you in the next video.